Greetings warriors and welcome back to another Bannerlord mods video. This time around I want to tell you how to enhance your battle experience using mods. And for that I've collected a total of 9 mods you can use in your game to achieve just that. But just before we go on with this video, thank you all for 20 mother k subscribers. You guys are truly amazing and I love talking to you, but I wish we could talk a little more. So why not join my discord where you can talk with me and other like-minded folks. Just write me a DM and I'll be happy to talk to you. But other than that I hope you liked this video. Here are 9 mods that really do enhance your battle experience in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. To start off the list I want to talk about Firelord by Pure Dark, which adds fire arrows, fire swords and burning damage to the game. Finally, you can play as Beric Dondarrion from Game of Thrones, igniting enemies with your sword, or even maces and pole arms. The author also added a burning mechanic to the mod, which works like this. Everyone has got an ignition bar of 0 from 100 points. When hit by an arrow, the bar will rise to 75 from 100 points. And when hit by a fire sword or mace or pole arm, you'll inflict a total of 100 points to the enemy, which means that they burn instantly. If blocked, you'll only inflict half the point to the enemy, meaning it takes 2 to 3 hits on the shield to ignite someone. The mod is highly configurable, meaning you can alter the light intensity, radius of the flames, etc. Or even raising the ignition bar to a much higher value so that your enemies won't burst up in flames after one hit. To make your blade fiery, all you have to do is press the C key when in a scene. Though the first time I started the mod, not only did my sword burst up in flames, but my player character also, which I didn't expect to happen. But thanks to the options menu you can turn that feature off. I really like this mod because I get heavy Prophecy of Panda vibes when using it. And let's be real here, it just looks freaking badass. The next mod I want to talk about is Soberax's Shoulder Cam by Soberax. I've talked about this one before but it just fits so well into this video, so here we go. The mod applies a shoulder cam style to the third person camera and also reduces a lot of the floatiness of combat by having the camera sway with your swings. Though the mod is good in itself. After some time I didn't like how the camera was placed and I wanted it to revert back to the same position the game had initially. But I wanted to keep the camera sway in the game just because I love having a dynamic camera instead of a static one. It really adds to the feel of the game. And thanks to the author this is possible. By going into the config file of the mod you can just change any value you want. He also included a readme file which explains all the parameters. If you'd like to have the camera like I do, just copy these lines right here. This is a mod I just can't live without anymore. Having the best of both worlds, heh. Vanilla camera and the swaying of the mod just add so much immersion to my game. Next up we have another mod by Xoberox which is called Xoberax Cut Through Everyone, which allows weapons to cut through multiple units, while considering armor and weapon types. Many people argue that this mod is too OP or too cheaty, but hear me out for a second. In its initial form, I'd agree. Yes, this mod is kinda OP and makes combat a lot more easier. But the author we all love by now included a nifty config file, where I changed it so you only can cut through an enemy if he dies by your slash, just like in Mortal. I also changed the damage retained per cut value to a much lower value to inflict less damage to every consecutive enemy hit when slashing through. This just adds a little more depth to the combat and overall I just like this change. Next up we have Fight Aggressively by MMTMM, which changes the AI's panic behavior so they won't panic so easily and fight as aggressively as they can in the battle. Though every battle will be a bloodbath after installing this mod. But the modder already stated that he make a version that lowers but does not completely eliminate the runaway mechanic, so I am keeping an eye out for that. I just didn't like how easily troops panic in this game, especially if you are rocking a two-handed mace build with a perk that makes the enemy lose 30% of their morale with every hit. Every big fight I had was pretty much over as soon as I whipped out my giant co uh, mace. Really hope the new version comes out soon, but until then I keep this one in my mod list because it's just so much more fun actually fighting enemies instead of them running away immediately. The next mod on this list is going to be, yet again, the Cheer mod by Jedi Josh 920 I covered this mod already two times. This is going to be the last time, I promise. Don't, don't hate me, I promise. 
but it just fits this list perfectly. What this mod does is introducing a cheer mechanic to the game where you can celebrate a hard earned victory with your fellow Kameraden. <coughs> Sorry for this, seems like my inner German came out. You can also raise your troops morale before starting a battle manually by pressing the V button. Rest in peace cheer mod, I won't cover you anymore, I swear. Maybe if an update comes though. And on to the next mod. We have the Realistic Battle mod by Mana93 and Philosoraptor. In the base game there are three types of damage, Pierce, Cut and Blunt. And in this mod each weapon has unique armor penetrating properties, which results in a more realistic experience. For example, swords are poor at cutting through heavy armor, so you take an axe or a mace if you confront such an enemy. I choose this mod above Armor Does Something, because this mod adds much more depth with features like Shield units always have their shield in front of them in all formations. So you want to have a spread formation, but you want them to hold their shields up? Well, not a native. But with this mod they hold their shields in any formation. Also shields now have realistic hitboxes. Ever wonder how your enemy just blocked your arrow with this shield despite being 100% sure that you would have hit this body? Well, in vanilla the collision hitbox is much bigger than their visual size and this mod changes that. Now the units want to fight as if they want to actually live through the battle instead of hacking and slashing like a goddamn zombie. And projectiles now have historically accurate speed and the damage is based on the kinetic energy in the moment of impact. I really, really recommend using this mod. If you want to make your battles longer, these changes really helped tremendously to enhance my battle experience. On the mod page they also have a module to tweak the collision between agents, meaning they won't clip into each other anymore, which I also recommend. And if you want even longer battles, I'd also recommend using the mod Health Rebalance by Kipstar. I also talked about this mod before, but like the cheer mod fits so well in this list. The mod doubles the hit points of the player and every NPC. I used the version where everyone has 150 health points instead of the vanilla 100. Can't say much about this one because I already talked about it for like 10 times. Next up we have Bear My Banner by Zeon Vision, which places banners back in the troops hands. I know Banner Peasants, which I talked before, does essentially the same thing if you just want to have banners. But this mod also has a highly configurable configuration file where you can change things like who should bear banners to which type of units should bear banners. And also if your companions or even you should have a banner in their hand when starting the battle. Also if you use any type of custom units like Noble Troops does, this mod adds banner bearers to them as well. So yeah, if you want more control over who should bear banners etc, then this is the mod for you. And the last mod in today's list is going to be the Dismemberment mod, also by Jedi Josh 920 I also talked about this one in my first Bannerlord Mods Weekly episode, and it's still so much fun decapitating enemies left and right. Like the title of the mod already implies, this mod adds the gore aspect of Dismemberment to Bannerlord. Whenever a player or NPC does fatal cut damage to an enemy's head by swinging left or right, there will be a chance that the head will be decapitated. Even though this mod is on this list, I don't recommend using it in its current state. Because the mod is very, very prone to crashes. I can play like 4 battles using this mod without crashes, but after playing more and more, the game starts to crash eventually. I just hope Jedi Josh 920 comes back to update this mod, because it's so much goddamn fun. So please, Jedi Josh 920, we need you. Please come back. Please. And on this note, Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you liked it, if you did, please press the like button. And if you like what I do in general, please consider subscribing. I hope many of those mods find their way into your Lord Order. And again, thank you all for 20k subscribers. When we hit 10k subscribers I said that we are an army of 10k warriors. And now look at us, one month later and we are already 20,000 people. It's just a crazy ride right now. Two months ago, no one knew who I was and no one cared. And now there are so many of you enjoying the stuff I love doing. So again, thank you all for sticking around with me. And I hope we are going to grow even bigger as time moves on. But other than that, I see you all in the next one. Stay strong, warriors. Bye.